okay, so the power went out. Now what are you going to do? I wanted to give you some practical suggestions on how to manage the power, the watt hours, available to you from the uh, EcoFlow Delta 1300 should the power go out. Uh, I built a system in uh, 2015 that was, it was a, an off-grid 10,000 watt battery capacity uh, solar generator. And this is where I got some of my ideas I'm going to share with you because it was completely off-grid. I had in my home also utility power, but I, I ran this thing completely separate. So I, I was plugging things in and, and trying to decide how long things would run or save energy for the night, uh, determine what the weather will be the next day and what I, what I can run. I learned to manage it that way, and I thought I'd share some of those things with you. There's a video here that I have that will um, show you the system. Now, the first thing, there's four things I'm going to talk about. And some of the things I'll say has to do with after the power goes out, and a couple of things have to do with how to prepare before the power goes out. Number one, when will the power be restored? That's absolutely necessary to find out. Uh, that would be some information that's invaluable because you can judge how much you can use the unit before you have to charge it again. So you need to find out how long the power will be out. And it's just going to be a rough idea anyway, probably, utility company will tell you, or you can have to assume the worst. Um, and the second thing you want to decide is when the power goes out, you have to decide how you're going to charge it. Because if it's going to go for two days, you, you're going to have to recharge it, probably, depending on what you're going to run, freezer, refrigerator, or something. And uh, you have a couple options. Uh, one is you, if, if the power is local and your community, another community near you has power, you can plan on, make a phone call, plan on uh, bringing it over there in, in several hours when it starts to run out and charge it up. That's what I like about this thing. It'll charge in an hour, zero to 80, so 80%. So, you know, uh, uh, that's an option. But uh, a lot of times that won't be available to you. It's a, lot, a widespread outage. Then you have to rely on solar panels. I'm doing another video after, probably in another week or so, um, about the inputs, you know, the solar panels and how all that works. But um, for now, I'm talking about capacity and output. All right, the third thing is, it has to do, the, the third and fourth thing are the most important in this video, in fact. The third has to do with how many watt hours can you use in this? Now, the battery capacity is 1295. But you can't use all that because the system needs to use some for itself in order to run. But you need to have some idea how much, how many watt hours are in this gas tank of a battery. Little metaphor. Um, and so you've, you've probably have seen some videos online about people doing efficiency tests on it where, where they, they plug in a, 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 you know, a kilowatt meter or something like this. And what, the way you do it is you just plug it in and turn the unit on and um, make sure it's full. And then whatever you're running, a constant drain, will you wait till it goes zero? And then you find out how many watt hours it actually used or how much it gave you. And that would be a percentage of the total 1295. Now, if you are using this, by the way, you need to take a little video towards the end because once the power goes out, it erases everything on this. So beware of that. Now, the, what I found is it's a, the efficiency was between 75 and 80%. I've drained it several times and I've, re, I've seen other videos and other people talk about this and, and it, there's a range in there. And nothing's concrete in what I'm talking about today. It's, 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 it's dependent on temperature, the load, uh, the condition of the battery, a, a lot of things. But basically between 75, 80%, on average, the efficiency was about 77, 77.5% for me, which is kind of a, a, a happy coincidence because that means that I have 1,000 watt hours available. Well, that, the, whole, the whole thing on the watt hours is you're going to want to change the state of charge. You want to convert that to watt hours. Now, because the, the, the state of charge is just telling you how many watts is left in the entire battery, not the watts that you have available to you. It's 47%, for example, of 1295. So um, how do you do that? Well, it's the, the, it's the happy coincidence is all I need to do is add a zero at the end of the state of charge, and that will tell me how many watt hours is available in this 
if I believe that it is 77% efficient. It's about, I think it's 997 or so. So you get a thousand watt hours available. That's nice to know how many watts you actually have to use. Now, the, there's, there's a chart that I put, I put under the video here you can look up. I'm gonna show you uh, how to use it and, and a little more information about this before I move on. Now, I posted this below the video for you to check out, but I wanted to show it to you and, and talk about it a little bit first. 100% uh, state of charge, your battery has 1,295 watt hours. 70% state of charge, got 906. This is total watt hours, but that's not what's available to you because the unit is going to have to use some of these for itself in order to run. If you believe it's 77% efficient and it's 80% state of charge, then you multiply 0.77 by 1,036, you get 798. Just round up to, to 800, you know, a couple more watts. You'll notice it's 800. All you had to do is add a zero. 80%, just add a zero. It's 800 watt hours. If you believe it's 0.77% and 60% state of charge, 0 0.77 times 777, you get 598. Rounded up a couple watts, you have 600. All you have to do is add a zero at the end of the state of charge. And of course it works if it's 65% or 72%. If it's 72%, it'd be 720 watt hours available. If you want to be more conservative and think it's more like 74% efficient, then you just go 0.74, say 90% efficiency, okay? 0.74 times 1165, 862. That's how many watt hours are available. 0 0.74, so 40%. 0 0.74 times 518 at a 40% state of charge gives you really 383 watt hours. So that's the math. That's how you do it. Uh, I hope this has helped. Now, the fourth thing I want to talk about has to do with uh, what you're going to run and how long you can run it. What I recommend you do is you get a sheet of paper and you write down all of the things you want to run. A toaster, a light, um, uh, the microwave, the, a blender, whatever it is you might want to run. All of the things, not at the same time necessarily, but you, you, you want to find out uh, you know, everything you want to run. And then the next thing you're going to do is uh, write down the watts that those items would require from your system. But before I get into how to do that, I want to clear up what watts, uh, kind of how watts work. I'm going to use watts and watt hours interchangeably. Look at watts or watt hours as, uh, as, a, as a, a amount of energy is going to draw per hour. For example, a 100 watt bulb is going to take an hour to, to get 100 watts out of this. Um, if you run a, a 100 watt bulb for a half hour, it's going to take 50 watts out of this. A thousand watt microwave that's going to take one hour and it'll drain it. Half hour, 500 watts. 15 minutes, 250 watts will come out. So it's it kind of time related. So you, you need to get that in your mind a little bit. So what you want to do in order to get the watts is you're either going to have to try to find out a, the label or a stamp of some sort that's on the devices you want to run um, or use the kilowatt meter. But uh, the reason I'm saying that is you can look up a toaster and, and look underneath. That, that My toaster, I mean, uh, my coffee maker is 1,025 watts. I think the toaster is 900 and something. But they, what they do is they use maximum watts, usually. And you're not going to be using those, so why include that on your list? Um, my washing machine, is, is the, ra the watts are rated really high on it because um, of, the, of the highest settings, but I don't use those. I use half of the watts, actually, that... that that it's rated. This will tell you how many watts per hour on average you actually use. Um, the, the, the kilowatt meter is, and also the kilowatt meter is extremely accurate. When you do get the uh, kilowatts showing on here, be sure that you multiply that number by a thousand because that will give you watt hours. Now, the, some of you are going to say, well, yeah, but the unit tells you how many hours you have left, right, when you run something. Well, that's, that's not necessarily very accurate because a lot of things you run are going, is going to vary in time. 
my TV, my 65 inch TV, it, it, it will vary also. It, you know, um, it's rated uh, maybe about 190 watts or something, but I only use 135 on average per hour according to this. So um, what the unit's going to do is it's going to, it's going to adjust constantly how many hours you have less, left based on the watts it's seeing. And um, so it's hard to kind of tell sometimes because a lot of the things you use, like my, I was mentioning my freezer, I think it's about 35 watts per hour it runs, but when I hook the unit up, it sees it as zero hours left because um, it, sometimes it's not, the compressor isn't on. Or boom, 50 watts show, so it, it shows the amount of hours left based on, on 50 watt hours. But, but it, so it varies. So you can't rely on that all the time. Now I'm going to show you here uh, what I'm talking about on my TV. Okay, I decided to run my TV. 65 inch. Running right now. And uh, look at this thing bounce around. The hours left. 9, what? 8, 9, 11, 14, 10. That's not helping me much. It's because the, the watts that the set's demanding according to this output here, are varying all over the place. 70 watts, 69 watts, 73, 72, 71, 66, 150, 130, you see that? Sometimes it's almost 200. Okay, so now I want to talk about how, uh, an example of how to manage the power. All of this has to do with managing your power, but this is an example of how to put it all together. Let's say my freezer is, uh, it takes 50 watt hours out of this per hour. It's rated, say, at 50, and that, or on, on, on average, 50 watts per hour. And I decided to, if the power's out, no input, it's nighttime, but I want to cook something. So I open the freezer, pull out a meal, and I want to microwave it. It, the, it, it calls 15 minutes. Well, um, it, 1,000, mine, 1,000 watt microwave divided by 60 uh, minutes is about 16.6, .6, I think, watts per minute. I'm going to round that to 20 just for math, easy math. Okay, so you have 50 watts per hour. It's coming out of a 1,000 watt battery bank, I've determined already. And I'm running a 1,000 watt microwave for 15 minutes. And that would be 20 watts per minute. That, that adds up to 300 watt hours. That's how much I would take out of this. Now, you might ask yourself here, this is the management part, um, how many watt hours or, or how many hours is that going to take away from your freezer to be able to continue freezing your, your food? And is it worth it? So you take the 300 watt hours that I know this is going to use out of this, and you divide the 50 watt hours from the freezer, and you'll see that you have, since each 50 represents an hour, you have six hours that's being taken away from your freezer. So, you know, you might not want to do that. Pop it open, put in a, you know, stove or mac and cheese and do it for seven minutes, three hours, or not. Uh, if it's the daytime and the sun's bright, you're bringing in 300 watts, you don't have to do math to figure it out. You know that, you know, it's going to get quite a few watts coming through, even with the, uh, not the full, even though it's, it's, there's a loss, you know that you're going to get 50 out of that and you're going to get, be able to do a dinner. The sun will be out all day. You can shoot from hip. This gives you some information to help you make decisions like that. You don't have to do math with everything all the time. Just understand the concepts I'm trying to put across here. Um, so anyway, uh, and, and there's one final thing I want to talk about. There's something wrong with the system. The, uh, the AC outlets on the back are backwards. The, I, I, I mean, in North America, the, on a three prong, it, it's wider on one side than the other, on, on some, like I have an extension cord that way. And um, they're backwards on, on the unit. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, you can see on my outlet, the left prong is longer than the right. But on the unit, the right one is longer than the left. So uh, my extension cord won't fit. So I, 
I uh, got a hold of Delta or uh, EchoFlow and I asked them and they said, let's see, um, with the situation regarding the prongs, we have an accessory for this and can arrange to send it to you. Um, this is the accessory. <laughs> it's just an adapter. Okay, so, um, but you can see, anyway, um, get one. I would, I would suggest getting one or at least check out the, the extension cords that you might need to use on, on a power outage. You know, what happened to me was I put this next to my freezer and my, the idea was if the power goes out, I will use an extension cord from my refrigerator and plug it in. So I didn't test it. I just put the, the, the extension cord next to the fridge just in case. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll test it out. It wouldn't fit because the wider prong was on the wrong side. So get one of these. If this has been helpful for you, um, please share the video, subscribe, and like it. And, uh, and thanks a lot for watching.